Hola, hello everybody. My name is Nicole Villiers. I would like to begin by extending an invitation. The invitation I am extending here is one to engage in a membrano practice in order to receive vibrations that make things tremble and that can shake the limits that fragment bodies, knowledges, languages, temporalities, signals and straight lines among other things that can and must be fast. I invite you to activate imagination in a vibrational way in order to decenter, rearrange, and possibly unlearn some of the static and rigid things we have been taught. I could extend this invitation using many different methods, but in this case, I would like to use my favorite one. I invite you to do it through resonance. Because when we resonate, we engage with a series of vibrations that activate membranes in our spaces, bodies, and minds. Parts of these vibrations are perceived as sounds when we listen. While we are resonating as well as listening, we become many. We receive, and by doing so, we also give back. Limits and borders are diffused, and things reorganize in an agglutinant relationality. A membranal practice is a practice of learning from the possibilities of resonance and interference so that we can rearticulate our relational ways and the narratives that define us. Today, this rearticulation and reorientation seem to be more urgent than ever because we have been living for way too long under a violent regime of extreme individuality and isolation, and this is promoted by hegemonic rigid lines in service of extraction and control. This is why the invitation I am extending today is one to explore other modalities through exercises of polyphonic togetherness, rituals for collective resonance and attunement, and spaces to listen to each other. Let's please activate our membranes and resonate together. In my work and research, I engage with different uh, experiments that center in the exploration of sounds and vibrations as construction materials, uh, materials that interweave agencies from the microscopic to the cosmic, that stimulate imaginaries and collectivities, as well as sensitivities. I believe profoundly that the understanding of a vibrational ontology can give us a series of strategies to reinforce our resonances and alliances with other entities, human and more than human. Something like understanding ourselves as part of larger arrangements uh, where everything uh, is in constant oscillation, resonance and relation. I usually work with new and ancient technologies and by operating from different disciplinary and identitary uh, borders, I tend to infiltrate um, in different spaces and use features that I find as opportunities to question hegemonic uh, perspectives and categories. And this way, possibly to explore other ways of imagining and being between worlds. This work has been for me like a vessel for resonant dialogues and collaborations where many things intertwine, such as disciplines, temporalities, perspectives, ritualities, states of consciousness and imaginaries. For the past years, I have been directing my work around the concept of la membrana, the membrane which I have developed as an organizational apparatus and model structure that stimulate vibrational ways of being uh, and thinking. To behave membranically means to be a body ready for oscillations. It means to think and experience in constant relationship with others. It means to be performative and in constant flux. Everybody is a particle of a larger distributed membrane that is in constant construction and rearticulation. Under this focus, the social fabric, or as I prefer to say, the social membrane, 
also include bodies that are not only human, incorporating other types of subjectivities and sensory registers to the conversation. Exploring the membrane uh, can provide a territory that consolidates a more convoluted, hybrid uh, and confusing order based in a constant being in relation. This allows us to collectively redefine our social realities and to inhabit our times in hybrid ways, non-linear ways. This is like some sort of invitation to encounter the pulsating as an axis. So la membrana, it's an entity that produces and receives vibrations. It is a porous boundary that can both separate but also connect. It is a threshold that is activated by vibrations and, and I can say that I am truly devoted on exploring la membrana as a physical and theoretical place for ontopistemological reconfigurings. There are many theoretical layers that construct the performative apparatus eh, of la membrana, but in its center, it contains notions of acoustemology proposed by ethnomusicologist and anthropologist Stephen Feld, interweaving an acoustic epistemology and an oscillatory being in constant relation. Within this dialogue, I believe it is also important to mention the many comings and goings um, of uh, Stephen Helmreich, anthropologist and author, in his notion, notions of transductions towards the construction of a vibrational ontology. These ideas intersect with the vibrational axis in the work of author and researcher Telly Trauer, and in other ways, with the multidimensional spirit of composer Polino Oliveros and her quantum improvisation and quantum listening as part of a deep, list, deep listening practice that is based in resonant, multiscalar and multidimensional relationships. These ideas provide a base for preparing the path toward anti-colonial practices of situated listening, as the ones in the work of scholar and artist Amer Khan Geyser, and in the listening without hunger, based in relationships of vibrational care and respect found on the work of scholar and artist Dylan Robinson. If we go a little bit deeper into Olivero's um, quantum territory, we might be able to attune simultaneously to different entities, scales, dimensions, and temporalities. So I invite you to think about this. Imagine with me, please. So let's go back to the very first time a sound took place. The very first time a sound occurred was when quantum fluctuations rippled the plasmatic universe. These are the primordial sound waves that gave place to the CMB, the cosmic microwave background. In order to explore possible ways towards the remembrance of our primordial plasmatic membranal relations, I believe that we could pay attention to contemporary oscillatory quantum codes, such as the ones in the work of Pauline Oliveros. Her work around quantum listening and quantum improvisation can provide some examples and ways of explore fuzzy membranal attunements, um, she was the, or the, the, uh, a curious and explorative deep listener. Olivero stumbled into quantum listening as part of their deep listening practice. Then, I, I quote Oliveros, quantum listening is listening to more than one reality simultaneously. This practice implies the possibility of listening fractal ways. It not only expands scales of attention, but also opens up the possibility of simultaneous engagement with differential registers of receiving and transmitting, as well as suggesting protocols to inhabit nonlinear temporalities. She writes again, quantum listening is listening in as many ways as possible, changing and being changed by the listening. The quantum brings to the conversation the potential of listening as an apparatus to contain, embody, and facilitate concurrent differential states. Through quantum listening, Oliveros conjures a caring attentiveness to otherness. This intention is strengthened by Oliveros' uh, notion of quantum improvisation, a practice that mobilizes improvisatory emergence in an expansive sociability beyond exclusively human agents, as she also involves uh, non-human mat machinic agents. Quantum improvisation is proposed as a way of tending towards a multidimensional simultaneity within sonic relationality. One key element to consider is that this is not an intellectual process, but an intuitive an intimate exercise of vibrational togetherness and plasmatic membranal arrangement. With this in mind, I would like to invite you to a listening session. 
This is a little sonic fiction made with ideas and sounds from the particle accelerator at CERN and in the Atacama Desert and other plasmatic moments. So please get comfortable. We're going to listen a little bit to, to this, uh, a few minutes of this sound. Let's talk about our past, our plasmatic past. Who knows, maybe our plasmatic past can help us rewrite our more plasmatic future. It is said that the very first sound vibrations that ever existed occurred when the primordial sound waves emerged from the ripples of the quark-gluon plasma moment of the early universe. This plasma was shaken by quantum fluctuations that propagated through it. These waves left an imprint in the universe's body, like marks that keep information that is encoded in the universe and we can access today, remnants of the most ancient sound. Like an echo that keeps going until today. This is a radiation that exists everywhere and contains valuable information between its densities, temperatures, and magnetic fields. They contain secrets of occult things, dark matters, and other unknown portals. It is like a map that we can use to navigate the cosmos. So the very first time something made a sound was when everything was a hot soup, a hot mess, and there was nothing else. There were no boundaries, no borders, and oscillations of this plasmatic entity colliding with itself made sound travel throughout its own body, as both the medium and the source. I always think about how every sound still behaves like that. I believe that our bodies get imprinted by the sounds that touch us. We are constantly storing sonic memories in our bodies, drawing maps to unknown secrets in our skins. They rearticulate our bodies and shake our flesh. Let's learn from our plasmatic past and reconnect with our very first sonic memories to refuse dosification of being, to refuse dosification of thought, to refuse dosification of time, to refuse dosification of everything. Welcome to your new plasmatic self that flows in pulsating temporalities that are triggered by quantum fluctuations that alter every single particle of our bodies. Embrace the plasmatic and shake the plastic out of yourself. Shake away every microplastic in your water. Shake away every stuck trauma. Shake away every post noise. Shake away linear time. Make some space to vibrate and recalibrate your senses, to resonate with the plasma we were in the past and the plasma we carry in our blood. blood, blood.
Now, let's go back to la membrana. Another fundamental layer uh, is one that articulates previous ideas through apparatuses that are entangled with reality. The notions of more than human performativity, agency, and the interactive cosmos proposed by Karen Barad, a physicist and feminist theorist. Now, the term apparatus is versatile and complex, extending beyond instrumental devices. It can refer to the dynamic arrangements of diverse phenomena that shape society, including a way to refer to the state as a complex structure. Barad argues that apparatuses are not passive by highly productive uh, instruments entangled with phenomena through interactive arrangements. They produce the phenomena they measure and are affected back by the phenomena. Our instruments connect us to the dynamic becoming of the world, defining our scope of reality. So, Barad theories challenges the notion of detached observation and emphasizes that the observer is part of the observed affecting and being affected by the phenomena. They propose a more than human perspective, where the observer is not limited to humans, and observing is an interactive process within a performative apparatus. Boundaries are not static, but emerge and evolve through ongoing boundary-making practices among matter, meaning, and phenomena across scales. The apparatus is an articulator of scales and relations. Then, when we understand the apparatus, and we, we, we define it, we can think about also perception and signals and patterns, perception and signal and patterns. Since perception implies a series of translational mechanisms, it is a phenomenon that can be contextually and culturally driven. Donna Haraway's notion of situated knowledges emphasizes that perception is embodied and continually reconfigured by its context and subjective conditions. For example, Approaching the world primarily through visualization perpetuates disembodiment and objectification. There are some uh, scholars that have challenged the notion of ocular centrism ingrained in, in Western culture, but sometimes they also end by idealizing and romanticizing sound um, and perpetuating other categorical divides, for example, replacing sound instead of vision. And this is also problematic. So while my notion of la membrana is said to decenter the visual, it does not uh, attempt to replace it completely with the sonic. That operation, as I said, would also be very problematic and a symptom of fragmented, sens fragmented sensorial categories. So following this critique, la membrana actually proposes a territory based in tuning into sensorial interferences that find a in order to find a language and codes that can help us fast these boundaries through a resonant interplay of signals. Because the world is not a static image, but it's also not only a sound. La Membrana is also deeply affected by the influential work of queer Chicana feminist scholar and poet Gloria Saldua around border thinking, the moral thresholds that delineate us, and poetry as a language of liberation and fight. This intersect with questions of difference, definition, uh, and finitude uh, that, that are found in the work of author and artist Denise Ferreira Silva and other thinkers that explore in a critical way the notion of subjectivity uh, and surface in order to create theories of fuzzy otherness. Arranging ideas that have uh, to do with deepness, with porous otherness, and undefined borders that are nurtured by lived experience, science fiction, and quantum physics. Within this context, and as I mentioned before, I would like to frame La Membrana as a place to fuzz, sight, and reorganize the sensorium out of the predominant surface-centered objectivity of ocular centrism, so we can allow ourselves to perceive through deep subjective immersion. And lastly, La Membrana also layers an examination of the construction of subjectivity outside of the Western norm and its categorical divides such as the cannibal metaphysics proposed by Eduardo eh, Viveiros de Castro, Marisol de la Cadena's ideas around Andean fractal identity, and Arturo Escobar's pluriversal thinking. Of course, we cannot leave out of this conversation Donna Haraway's notions of nature cultures and other eh, revisions of animisms, eh, intelligences, proposing it as something that is also outside of the human brain eh, as a way to rearrange the social and re-enchant reality. 
Speaking of enlarging uh, our relational languages and paying attention to other subjectivities so we can enlarge the spectrum of our realities, I would like to make a pause uh, from La Membrana and refer to a poem by the Queen poet uh, Gabriela Mistral. This is the poem La Contadora. It was translated into English by Ursula Le Guin, and in English it's titled The Teller of Tales. Uh, I see this translation as a first membranal operation being enacted, offering a south-north a dialogue and a link between realms of science fiction and poetry. Mistral poems signals to the importance of listening, attuning oneself to otherness, and to the many stories that build our realities, beginning with the lines uh, of the poem I'm going to quote here. So she says, when I'm walking, everything on earth gets up and stops me and whispers to me. And what they tell me is their story. So the poem centers on stories that are whispered from above, below, and all around us in unknown languages. I understand this poem as a door to other subjectivities and languages that have been long forgotten, uh, but, can, but still affect and create the worlds we live in. So in a piece that I called uh, Cuchiteos, Whispers, I propose new translations of the poem through multiple personal membranal operations of translations and transductions. For example, poetry readings to an AI system, poetry readings with the wind, with a system like La Orejona. This in order to explore what else can be unveiled uh, when language stops being semantic and bound to linear logic. Now I would uh, like to uh, invite you to listen a little bit of these poems that came out and became textures, patterns and chants. <laughs> Well, you got an idea. Now, back to la membrana again. Based on the configuration and characteristics of a vibrational membrane, la membrana is a sensus shared space. It provides a shape-shifting territory that dynamically stimulates imagination and offers the possibility of thinking and being otherwise. La membrana is an in-betweenness, a communicative boundary and vibratory space that confuses distinction between categories and shakes rigid notions of reality. Also, uh, some membranes embody a series of other complex transductive mechanisms that are worth paying attention to. For example, as you can see here, the eardrum or tympanic membrane, a thin, circular, semi-transparent film that, as it trembles with reality, has the potential of trans transforming sound waves into perceived sounds. Although we must remember that we don't listen only through our ears and that sound waves are not perceived through audition, but for example, not only through audition, but for example, also through touch. And by attuning to practices of intimate and tactile listening, we can potentially unveil other skills of attention and thus of reception, continuously mediating a series of resonant material and immaterial relations. The membrane that gathers us here tonight, La Orejona, is actually inspired by the eardrum, and her name is a term in Spanish, uh, in Chile, that, that we use to, to say it means the big eared one. And La Orejona is a technological apparatus, uh, it's a sculpture that operates as a vibrational membrane microphone that interacts with phenomena such as sound waves in the air, caresses from the wind, oscillations induced by touch, and tremors from the ground. La Orejona is a rubbery, oscillatory, disobedient listening apparatus sometimes too disobedient, <laughs> uh, for fussing, for agglutinating, for obscuring, for noising, in contrast uh, to typical modern microphony that targets signals and filters noise, La Orejona operates with the purpose of indiscriminately weaving independent signals into a collective and inseparable muddy mass of sound. La Orejona, um, I like to think, of, of it, and I like to say that it's a, an extremely social apparatus uh, which makes it very hard to control and understand in a fixed scale. As she confuses signals, things become really hard to grasp and even things re are rendered incommensurable, reorganizing our perceptual expectations and individual definitions. 
Through these processes, this piece aims to ask what hegemonic modes of listening can be challenged and what forms of relations emerge when thinking through vibrations. I propose la membrana as a resonant apparatus to tune in. A membrane is to vibrations and sound waves, what an antenna is to radio waves, as the membrane can intercept and radiate energy through sympathetic vibration. The membrane can be an apparatus to tune in, not only as a sensorial extension, but most importantly, as a sensorium in itself. By inhabiting reality from a membranal perspective, I propose thinking and behaving like a membrane so we can be ready for vibrations, so we can be ready to adjust, recognize, resonate, recalibrate, receive, and tune into our vibrational reality. I invite you to behave like a membrane so we can resonate like a drum. Let's resonate together. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much.